Hey folks, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas. I hope you had a good New Year's. It occurs to me that we already did the Jake Eddy video this year and I forgot to say happy holidays and all that good stuff. So <laughs> I hope you guys had a good had a good winter break. Now, speaking of that Jake Eddy interview, one of the things we talked about in there was improvisation. You know, if you want to sound authentic and you want to sound like you're really playing the style in a believable way, the only path to that is tunes. Man. I am disagreeing with you on, on, a, on a technical point. I don't think that fiddle tunes teach you how to improvise. Um, I think that you have to work on improvising as its own skill. But I think for your improvising to feel authentic, you have to learn a ton of tunes because you, you have to know what language you're including in your improvisation. There was a handful of comments under that video from people saying they enjoyed that conversation. And even some of my students were like, hey, that conversation was really fun. So I wanted to sort of go over some of the things I talked about and some of the exercises that I mentioned in that interview and, and present them to you just, just kind of casually here the way I would if we were taking a lesson together. So yeah, this, this lesson is for beginning bluegrass improv. You want to play things that sound like bluegrass and you literally can improvise nothing. If you can already improvise a little bit, this lesson might seem redundant to you, but we're happy to have you anyway. So let's get into it. I'm gonna pull up some tab and uh, let's make it happen. All right, so there's a couple things we need to know if we're gonna be improvising. So let's talk about those things first. So rushing through this a little bit, we're gonna need to know a scale. And that scale is gonna to have to agree with a chord. The chord that we want to improvise over right now is a G major chord. The scale that goes best with that is gonna be the G major pentatonic scale. And if you're wondering uh, why is this the scale that works best for the G major chord, there's a video called um, what, what Notes, I, What Scales I Use to Play Bluegrass, What Notes, something like that. Watch that video and, <laughs> and in a very long-winded sort of obtuse way, I explain why this is the scale. The thing is, is that this on its own sounds very kind of pedestrian. We, I assume most of us know, I should say, um, what a pentatonic scale sounds like, but let me, let me show you. If I was gonna take a, a pentatonic scale and improvise, the sound that I get is very neutral, I guess is the word. It sounds like this. That sound um, is just constant eighth notes, and it's only notes that appear in this scale. That's the only thing that I'm using. There's nothing else, there's no other ingredients. Once again, it sounds very neutral. That doesn't mean that it's not useful. We're certainly gonna add more to this system, but I can tell you <laughs> that if you can't do this, admittedly, you don't have to do it that fast, but if you can't do what I just did, you're gonna wanna practice that. So let me give you a couple rules to practice that with. I'll write you an example too. This example, <laughs> don't practice it. I write this for every student when I show them this. I always write, don't practice this example. Uh, so here we go, don't practice this example, make your own. Very important, very important because the example that I'm writing you really doesn't matter. Uh, so if uh, if I'm going through here, I want to always play constant eighth notes. Ba, 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 ba. So I'm looking to just fill in every spot like this, just a constant stream of notes. I can mix them up however you want, um, but there is another rule. I wanna play adjacent notes. So you can see right here, I've created this massive jump, right? Where it goes from here to here. Ooh, that's not gonna sound very musical. So no big jumps like that. The other thing is that when I'm making these, I really don't wanna repeat notes. So you can see I've made this line now with a couple of repeated notes. The reason we don't wanna practice that is because it's not very difficult. In a way, it's kind of avoiding the challenge. You have to think quickly to keep finding that same note. If instead you're repeating notes, you are avoiding the think quickly challenge. Instead, make sure your lines do not have repeated notes. And there's a couple other soft rules that I could put in there. Now that I've shown this to enough people, some people have a tendency to want to use hammer-ons and pull-offs and fancy things. What you already know is really important, but if you can't do this, you're gonna have a bad time. So remember to practice this. This is the exercise structured the way it is for a reason. And, and I can show you the reason. Let me demo that real quick. So when you hear bluegrass, you hear a lot of constant lines, almost like machine gun fire or something, right? Ba, 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 ba. You hear this. There's no break in all that, right? There's 
there's no stop in those eighth notes. Just da 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 da. Make sure that you're you're making that. If you're improvising, you're trying to include other things, and like I hear these little, you know. That's cool, we can use that later, but it's not really what this particular moment is about. So be careful that you're not letting any previous knowledge you might have, you know, interrupt your bluegrass training. So let's finish up our example here, and I'm gonna end on a G note. And here is an example of a nice endless line. Um, you can see I didn't even use every note in the scale. I could have, um, but I didn't quite get there, which is just fine. So the most kind of acceptable bluesy, you know, dirty sound out there is what we like to call the dirty third. <laughs> the dirty third, no, normally when I use that term, I'm talking about the minor third, this blue note, the minor third, and how it interacts with the major third, or even the second below it. This blue note really only gets used in a couple ways, which is good news for us. So I'm gonna write down the ways that I see it used most often. So we'll see the, uh, the dirty third go up. So right here we have B flat. B would be the third of this G scale. So B flat is going to be natural or the flat three is going to the major three, right? And after that happens, a lot of times we'll see it go to the root note. We'll also see uh, the sort of the other way, right? We'll see the minor third and this will go down to the second and then that will go to the root note. Both of these will sound very familiar. They don't sound too exciting on their own, but very familiar. That's me using only those two licks over and over again. You can hear it's it's pretty exciting. You know, these can be slides, they can be hammer-ons, they can be uh, pull-offs, I guess, in this case. It kind of depends on the context, what they're gonna be. Um, I will just write those, you know, for the sake of writing something. <laughs> the other way that I will see these go is I'll see them go, um, instead of going to the root note afterwards, they'll go to the fifth as if they were ascending, which I already did a couple times. So um, same uh, dirty third operation, right? one to two there on the A string. But instead, I'm gonna go up to the open D string. Um, and actually the same can go uh, this way. This is probably the most rare one, um, but you know, complete the system, right? All of them. This is all in one octave, but we actually get all of these same licks in another octave. So this is me writing just the same licks basically. And so to, to pair with this scale, right? This G major pentatonic scale, and more importantly, to pair with our endless line uh, improvisation, these are the licks that will give us sort of an acceptable amount of danger, right? Like a very palatable amount of grit. Once again, endless lines combined with this lick. to put this into our exercise and once again be kind of diligent about this we want to improvise these endless lines but we now want to include these licks um, so I want to pick some of these at random I wonder if I wonder if I can get Google to pick random numbers for me all right what's the random number between one and eight Google and Google says five what's our fifth lick here all right we're gonna start with this one so let's pop this down this is our example here uh, I like I like this start I use this lick a lot. <laughs> I kind of want to um, maybe evolve it just a hair. What if we repeated the blue note and then we went back to the root? I like that. Let's say let's generate another random number. Google, tell me what your next random number is. Uh, two. Okay, so two is this lick. So before we use this lick, we got to lead ourselves down and then we'll drop that in. What's your next random number, Google? Give me number eight. Oh, you tick me up. This is something we'd see a lot over the five chord. Um, actually, I did it over G in my example a second ago. Uh, as we pass through, I'm going to make an executive decision to include this lick too. And then we kind of get this nice thing where we're like referencing the same lick multiple times. Uh, let's see. Google Bunch, give me one more. Give me one more. Number three. What's number three? Ooh, you're making me go all the way back down. Okay. Uh, let's do this one again to get back down. All right. So here is our endless line with the dirty third. Let me play that for you real quick. <laughs> If a, if a robot, Google can write <laughs> bluegrass, I think you can do it too. This is not, you know, a perfect example. Obviously, if I was going to revise this, I'd change some things. I'll show you some of the things I might change 
This phrase maybe has a little bit too much repetition in it for me. So I might alter it like this. Yeah, I might do something more like that. I think that makes more sense to me. Um, you know, and you could you could look at some of these other things, right? You could say like, hey, uh, you know, maybe if this was a real break I was writing, maybe I might want like a phrasing thing here. You know, maybe that would be cool. <laughs> So these uh, take your lines from being very pedestrian, right? This didn't sound much like bluegrass. And we really only took a handful of licks. I mean, it's four licks and just two octaves, right? These are the four ideas. And these, this is the second octave. And we're just using those piecemeal throughout this whole thing. And look, we come up with a pretty good line. I'm not saying this is perfect. It's a pretty good line though. For folks that are having trouble improvising anything at all, these are the baby steps that you can take before you start making sort of more dangerous, complicated decisions about what you want to improvise. Let's do this. Uh, let's do this for another another uh, couple chords, and we'll call it a day. So here we go. The next chord that uh, maybe you want to play over uh, is how about a C chord, right? C chord is going to come up in the song. So we're gonna take uh, a scale like this. That's gonna be our C major pentatonic. If we wanted to play any blue note stuff over this scale, when we're improvising our lines, we're gonna need those same licks. Let's see what those licks look like now that we're in C. There's the first one. These are just direct translations of the same phrases, um, but this time we're moving them uh, to a C chord. Uh, and then I have the same things, but we're going up to the, the fifth. Fifth of C would be G in this case. And here's the last one. Remember, this is the most rare one. And then we're gonna write these same things the octave up, right? So in the next octave up here, I'm probably gonna use the open string and do the uh, kind of the Doc Watts and Billy strings thing, if you will. Going the other way, sliding down. And let's see, this time going to the fifth. By far the most rare one right there. Ooh, that's a spicy, a spicy lick right there. Cool, and these would be our Dirty thirds for C. So we could now, in theory, build an endless line for the key of C. Uh, let's say I want to start with this lick. Let's grab that one and let's lead ourselves upwards. I like that lick. Now let's do the same thing we did last time. Let's repeat that lick. So that, that four zero, I'm going to repeat that before I finally go to one. All right, four zero one, four zero one. I just repeated that four zero two times. Um, which one do I want to do now? I want to do this one. And here we go, here's one more. And we can end it right here. We don't have to do a particularly long lick. We just want to prove that this whole system works. So here's our new phrase. So once again, there's our endless line uh, with the dirty third. Remember, I call them endless lines because you can do this as long as you want. In your own practice, you can make this, you know, you could do this for minutes um, just with the scale up here and the dirty third licks right here. Okay, let's do our very last chord. The last chord you might want to do this over. Let's say uh, we might want to do this over a D chord. Let's write a D chord right there. This D pentatonic scale is always so difficult right here in the root position because of how <laughs> these strings work out. Let's write it this way. This is how I choose to write it today. And once again, we have all of these dirty third licks. Let's fast forward through me writing all of them. There's actually a bunch in the key of D because you can get them in a handful of octaves there. Whoa, that's pretty cool. And once again, with all of that written out, we should be able to create an endless line for the key of D. Yeah, let's just, let's write one down. Let's, let's write it in the computer first. Remember that normally I'm not doing this with a computer, normally doing this on the fly, just improvising, but I want you to see how it's done. So I'm, I'm writing it in tab software. Don't roast me for that. I know that it's a little ridiculous. It's just the easiest way to show you. I'm not even copying and pasting them now. I'm just, you know, doing them off the cuff. Uh, I want to get one of those low ones in there. Cool, let me play that for you. There you go. <laughs> so that is how to um, improvise, you know, just basic bluegrass lines. Um, they're not going to be the most exciting thing. That's okay. This is still a valid improvisation. This is still worth something and it's worth practicing. 
uh, but you can make these over G, you can make them over C, you can make them over D. All right, folks, I hope you liked that quick lesson. If you want more advice about bluegrass improvisation, I have a video called Bluegrass Improv Exercises um, where I talk about a little bit of this stuff and I talk about a lot of other stuff. That one would probably help you a lot too. Uh, if you haven't already and you like this content, please consider hitting that subscribe button or hitting the join button right next to it. It really helps. Um, you're just letting YouTube know that, hey, this guy's not awful. We should recommend his content. And you know, it helps me pay my mortgage. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, gang, I will see you on Tuesday for a live stream, 6 p.m. every Tuesday. You have a good one.